Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, continuing to evaluate and grade out some of these transfer portal classes. And we are taking a look at the Miami Hurricanes. This is a team that we've talked a lot about. They've been active to close out the 2023 high school recruiting class, and then they've been very active in the transfer portal. So again, before we even get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys. The support you guys have shown truly has been unreal. We, I love talking ball. I love talking ball with you guys in the comment section, especially the Miami Hurricane fans. You guys have been active, letting us know your takes, and we can't thank you guys enough for all the support. So again, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And for Hurricane fans, like it is going to be an active next couple weeks and months on the high school recruiting trail. So lock in if you do enjoy the content. You like talking some recruiting as we head into this 2023 season. We can't thank you guys enough for all the support. Let's get into this Miami Hurricanes transfer portal class. And before we even talk about it, we're talking about off-season moves. I don't think Miami made a better move than getting rid of Josh Gaddis. If you guys have, and I, I promise you, I will not get on my soapbox and and just trash Josh, Josh Gaddis. As a Michigan fan, I've had a lot of experience with Josh Gaddis. I thought he was one of the more overrated offensive play callers. I don't even know if he was calling the plays for Michigan when he took the job at Miami, but you look at what Josh Gaddis did, and, and for the Miami listeners who've been with us for a little bit, you guys have probably already heard this spiel, but like Josh Gaddis gets the job going to Miami. You look at the success when he was at Michigan. That was not his offense. He came into Michigan preaching speed in space. When did Michigan have the best offense? They had the best offense when they were going back to Jim Harbaugh's offense with two tight ends and running the football. And so, like, this craze that Josh Gaddis had just didn't really make any sense. And then Miami hires him. It turns out very poorly. Now he's at Maryland, and I think they scored 13 total points in that spring game. So, again, I think the biggest move was getting rid of Josh Gaddis, but we're here to talk transfer portal. So let's get into some of the players that Mario Cristobal and this Hurricanes team brought in. And you take a look at how we evaluate it. We evaluate it on the positions of need that we think Miami had, and then the quality of players that they were able to get in the transfer portal. And let's start on the offensive line. Like the trenches on both sides of the ball, quite frankly. We'll start on the offensive side. The One of the best players in the transfer portal class as a whole, Javion Cohen, coming over from Alabama, that's I, I love that. I love that guy. I, this Javion Cohen is a guy that you take a look at the 2023 NFL draft. He's probably going day two. Like this is an NFL caliber player that's coming to Miami to play a senior season. We're talking first team all ACC kind of player. He's phenomenal in pass protection, an absolute road grader in the run game. You look at this new Shannon Dawson offense. They want to spread the rock. They they want to throw the football around a little bit. But you know Mario Cristobal is still going to run the football. Javion Cohen is going to help that in a big, big way. And the second guy, Matt Lee, coming over from UCF, I I don't think – I think one of the more underrated positions, especially at the college football level, is a veteran center who can call out pass protections. He's seen a lot of different blitzes. And especially when you're talking about potentially starting two true freshmen at the tackle positions – Having a guy in Matt Lee who's a redshirt senior, he's played a lot of football under at the center position, I think makes a ton of sense. And I think you look at the battery of Javion Cohen and Matt Lee on the interior offensive line for Miami, like that two massive, massive additions to a position that Mario Cristobal prides himself on developing and having a strong offensive line dating back to his days at Oregon. Now, on the flip side, they also wanted to establish the trenches on the defense. I thought the depth for Miami was not quite there. You have a guy like Leonard Taylor, who's an absolute dog. He was banged up last year. He's a guy that I'm very excited about heading into 2023. Similar to Florida in Gervin Dexter, like I think you're going to get Leonard Taylor's best football when you're able to have some depth behind him and you're not forcing him to play too many snaps a game. And you go out and get a guy in Thomas Gore, Branson Dean, two guys who've played on the defense, Anthony Campbell, the most recent. Like That's just... I'm not saying all three of those guys are starting caliber players. I'm not. But I'm saying that those guys are all going to play football for Miami in 2023 and add some much-needed depth to that defensive line. And especially you got some young guys coming in. Ruben Bain, I've heard very, very good reviews on the defensive line. I expect him to play a little bit. But depth at the defensive line position is something that I don't think gets talked about enough. We talked about it with USC the other day. You look at the blueprint. Georgia's defense. And yes, it helps that they had multiple first round players on that defensive line. 
at one point in 2020, at the whole season, in 2021, Jalen Carter wasn't even starting for that defensive line. He was getting rotated in with Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt. And that makes it a nightmare for offensive linemen to have to deal with Jordan Davis for two downs. And then on third and long, you trot in Jalen Carter and, and he's fresh off the sideline. It's massive. And so having depth at the defensive line, letting a guy like Leonard Taylor get his blow and then come in fresh, I think is going to be massive. So not only are you getting two really good, a couple of really good players on the defensive line, I should say. But you're going to have Leonard Taylor and guys like that, Jafari Harvey, I think you could throw in there, Akeem Mesidor. They're going to be a little bit more fresh. They're going to be able to have a little bit more impact when they're on the field. So you saw Mario Cristobal take a look at this Miami team. Where did we struggle? We struggled with some physicality. They addressed it not only in the transfer portal. You saw them address it in the 2023 class, landing Pancake Concho, landing Francis Malioga. I think that makes a lot of sense. And another guy you might want to talk about in terms of it was really hard to find transfer portal linebackers who were very productive. Francisco Marioga coming over from Washington State is one of those guys, and that's a position that Miami has struggled with for years. I mean, I, I look back to like Denzel Perryman, Quarterman. Like, I haven't really remembered many really good backers for Miami since those kind of guys. And so it's a position that Miami has struggled to recruit. They struggled to develop. You get a guy in Francisco Marioga who comes in a 6'3 frame, 225 pounds. He's physical between the tackles, but can play in space. I, I think that one made a lot of sense too. And I'm not knocking a guy like Corey Flagg, but I think you're getting a bona fide starter who's played a lot of football in Francisco Marioga. I think that one made a lot of sense as well. And the next position you want to talk about, and this was, if I were to give Miami a grade, which we were going to do at the end, but I'll give it now as a B plus, this was probably the one position I wish they addressed a little bit more. And that's the playmakers on the outside. You look back, who is your leading receiver for Miami? And I don't have to lecture Miami fans. They know this. Will Mallory, the leading pass catcher for Miami last year. What does that tell you? It tells you the wide receivers weren't making enough plays down the field. And I think that explosive element of that Miami offense was a little bit hindered. Shannon Dawson comes in and says, we are going to want to push the ball down the field. Let's go get some guys who can make some plays. And we're starting off with a guy in Tyrell Harrell, who a very interesting get in the transfer portal. Did not play for Alabama much when he transferred over from Louisville. You look at his time, and my brother talked about him a little bit. For, reportedly, a 4-1-9 hand time. A 4-2-5 laser time on the 40-yard dash. This dude might be the fastest player in college football. And at the college football level, speed kills. Like, if you are just straight up faster than everyone else on the field, you're really hard to deal with. And I'm not even saying Tyler Harrell's going to be your leading receiver. He averaged 29.8 yards per catch in 2021 for Louisville. This is a guy that blows the top off of the defense. But what I'm saying is you need to respect his speed. You need to have cornerbacks respect it. You need safeties to respect it. And what does that happen? What, what happens when defenses need to do that? Guys like Xavier Restrepo are going to be eating you up on those intermediate routes. And so bringing in a guy like Tyler Harrell, bringing in a guy in Shamar Kirk, who I really liked out of Juco, Texas A&M was in on him. I think that adds just some other, uh, another dimension that Miami wide receiver room and at this point, it's like bring in a bunch of bodies and let's see who hits, whether it's Kobe Young, whether it's Jacoby George, Xavier Restrepo, whether it's the true freshman Nathaniel Joseph. You have six, seven, eight guys who are talented dudes, who are playmakers. Let's see which four kind of shake out and become the, your go-to guys in that Shannon Dawson offense. And the last position we got to talk about is the cornerback room, which – Looking at the depth chart, I was a little bit surprised they hammered the cornerback position as much as they did, but I do like what they did. They got some young guys in Jihad, Jad, Jadius Richard from Vanderbilt, who's a 2022 kid, and then you got some more experienced guys in Jaden Davis, Terry Roberts, and then probably the best one of the class going down to Devontae Brown coming over from UCF. That was you're clearly seeing that Mario Cristobal says, hey, hey, maybe we don't feel great about this cornerback room. They go out and add four guys. Two guys who might be more developmental guys will be in the system for a little bit. And then guys like Jaden Davis coming over from Oklahoma, who's played a lot of football, started 20-plus games for the Sooners, and is going to be a guy that you can trust to come in and play at a high level at the Power 5 level at that cornerback room. So talking about evaluating what Miami did, I, I love it. I think they got a bunch of starters, and I think they got a bunch of guys who just provide some depth to this program. If I did have one maybe gripe, if you will, 
there were a lot of premier pass catchers in the transfer port. I'm not, they might not be done. You have guys like Keon Coleman, Zakari Franklin still on the board. I wish they went out and got more of a proven wide receiver. You got a Juco kid in Shamar Kirk. You got a speedster in Ty- Tyrell Harrell who like they're, I'm not saying they're bad gets. I think they're good gets, but I wish maybe you got a guy like a Keon Coleman who's called for 700 plus yards in the big 10, a guy in Zakari Franklin, who's going back to back years over a thousand yards at UTSA. I just think a lot of two of those guys, one coming from the Juco rank, one guy who only caught 19 passes in the last two years at the power five level, maybe not the most proven guys, but you talk a look, you take a look at what Miami did overall, a bunch of starters, a bunch of depth players, 24 seven sports graded them out as the sixth best transfer portal class. That is off the heels of a very, very good 2023 high school recruiting class projecting Miami to 2023 you're building on that high school recruiting class. Am I saying Miami is going to win a national title next year? No, I don't think so. That being said, bring have a good season, get a really good 2024 class, and start building around some of that young talent. This program will turn around a lot faster than people think. Mario Cristobal is one of the best in the game when it comes to the talent acquisition part of the sport. And quite frankly, that is the most important aspect of college football over the last couple of years, especially with NIL coming. And so – I'm excited about this Miami program. I think they did a very good job in the transfer portal. Again, wanted to keep this one short, but just give my overall opinions on how Miami shook out in the transfer portal. Appreciate you guys checking us out again. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later.